Welcome back to Dune Road in East Quag, and we are enjoying this day. It is turning out to be a really nice day. You know, while we're here in the Hamptons, the Clyde Beatty Cole Brothers Circus is in Southampton. We thought it'd be good if we took a look at the world's biggest under the big top circus and give you a preview. The Clyde Beatty Cole Brothers Circus is alive with tradition and history. It's much the same as it was 100 years ago. The only difference now is the circus no longer travels on the railroad. They now use the highway. And organizers tell me it's one of the last three-ring circuses in the country. There are a few tra major traveling circuses still left in the United States. We, we don't claim to be the last one. There are others, but uh, this is the last of the traditional and the last of the really big ones left traveling in the United States. And it's a, it's a, it's a major circus under, under the tent. You know, you don't really enjoy a circus unless it's under a tent. And, uh, you know, we call it the real circus because it is a real circus. They have preserved the true circus under the big top, three rings, traveling on a daily basis throughout America. It houses... Uh, an assortment of acts from uh, international circus stars from around the globe. Now, traveling with the circus isn't exactly an easy job. You're on the road for about eight months out of the year. Most of these acts are families who have been with the circus for 20, 30, even 40 years. And what they have to do is tote their gear, their acts, and themselves and live out of these mobile homes. How long have I been with the circus or in a circus? In a circus. 70 years, 74 years, actually. Wow, and what kind of changes have you seen in the circus? Well, it's uh, more modernized to what it used to be. And I've only worked with the, the best of circuses all over the world, training animals of four kinds, lions, tigers, leopards, cheetahs, pumas, bears, horses, you name it, I've trained it. We're back at the beach. <laughs> what a ride, I'm telling you. There are no McPherson struts or a, a, a fancy suspension on this one, but this is some ride. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is some ride. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> That's the wildest ride I ever had. This is Pete the Elephant, right, Walter? Yes, sir. Walter, you're the chief trainer for Pete. Now, Pete is actually a gal. Yes. She used to be named Pee Wee when she was younger, so they just named her Pete as she got older. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now she's an Asian elephant, and yes, about how old? She's about 35. Yeah. She weighs about four and a half tons. Yeah. She's got a beautiful temperament. If she can give me a good ride, she can give anybody a good ride. <laughs> yeah. We use it for a lot around the kids and everything to give elephant rides out there at the circus. Yeah. And now uh, Pete is real a real smart elephant. She can do some tricks, right? Yep, I'm going to show you how to do it here in just a minute. Okay, fire away. Let's go. Okay, come here, Pete. Got to give it a kick to get up. You see that? Man, oh man. Walter, how much does Pete weigh? About four and a half tons. Four and a half tons? Like 8,000 pounds? Yes, yes. And I was riding that? <laughs> what happens if she stumbles? I'm dead, right? <laughs> All right, Trump, I stand. All right, Trump, I stand. All right, up, 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 up. Very nice. Up, up, up. Oh. Very nice. Come here, Pete. Walter, that's great. All right, there's just a few of them right now. Yeah, she's a beauty. Thank you very much for bringing her. And, and does she take to traveling very well with the oh, yeah, Clyde Beatty uh, Cole Brothers Big Top Circus? Yes, yes. She's used to it now and everything like that. But she that. winters in Florida. Yeah. Okay. Right. 
All right, now we're going to go back to the beach. We're going to see if Michael Ann Wolf has uh, been working up her tan yet. But take it away, Michael Ann. Drew, I know the elephant is a tough act to follow, but I've got a group of real beach lovers here. Can you tell me your name? Derek. And you? Craig. And who are you? Sarah. Are you guys having fun today? Yes. And do you like the beach? Yes. Is this your favorite beach? Yes. What do you like about it? Mm, get the toys. Uh... Toys? What do you like about the beach? The, um, the ocean. Yeah, um, how about you? Uh, toys. Can you say, hi, Drew? Hi, Drew. Hi, Drew. Okay, Drew, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Michael Ann. We're back here at the Hampton Beach Club. And you know, I like this. We can get our bare feet going here. No, nope, we're getting rid Sorry. of the shoes. We're getting loose. Drew's so, getting loose. To my right here is James DePiva of ABC's One Life to Live, the sexy adventurer Max Holden. Yes? Is that who I've been playing? Is that the character you're playing? I wore the wrong clothes. I'm sorry. I'll be back. How did you get a reputation <laughs> like that? Sleeping with my brother's wife helped. Uh, <laughs> among other things. Family show now. Well, it's, it's only on the show. It's all fantasy. It's not real. You're from California. Yes, originally. We're getting no serious. Northern California. Yeah, Northern California. Northern California, just east of San Francisco, a place you've never heard of, even though you are from California, supposedly. That's what he says. And uh, how did you and ABC get together for One Life to Live? Oh, they... <laughs> well, they didn't want to get together at first. Uh, my agent kind of forced me down the throat of uh, the casting directors Good. in Los Angeles, and they sent the tape back here. Then they flew me back auditioned with Andrea Evans who plays Tina on the show not a bad way to make a living I guess and uh, by the time I got on the plane back to Los Angeles they'd called my wife in LA and said he's got the job tell him to pack and know how to ride a horse in two weeks great so that was, what were you doing before that uh, actually my last job was uh, running lines with uh, Steve Allen and Jane Meadows strange job I don't know. That they, we we just happen to have a clip right here of One Life ooh, to Live. Thanks ah, to ABC ooh, that ah. allow us to take a look at this scene of the sexy what? adventure of Max Holden. What's it about, Drew? Let's take a look right now, okay. and we're going to see it. Okay, here it is. <laughs> You've been playing me for a fool for weeks. I'm going to put a stop to it right here and now. Why don't you tell me again about Steve's letter? The one he so conveniently left behind, giving his blessings to us, loving each other with no guilt. It's what Steve wanted. No! It's what you wanted. It's what you wanted in that sick little fantasy of yours. It became so complete it took you over to where you'll do anything to get to me. Even if it means forging that letter from Steve. No, don't, don't try to deny it. I found Steve's journal in his room. And I compared the handwriting in it with the handwriting on the letter. Oh, you did a very good job. But it was obviously not Steve's handwriting. Is this what it's all about? Don't you dare downplay this! Ooh, oh, scary. Oh. Wasn't that, she a beautiful woman, Drew? That is <laughs> gorgeous. That, now, now, that was a very heavy scene. I, I thought it was, it was just boy-girl stuff, you know? But that was very heavy, very heavy scene. Great drama. <laughs> okay. Very, very dramatic. It's, it's my forte, obviously. Going for the Emmy on I'm very one. serious. I'm very Daytime serious. Daytime Emmy. Yeah. As a young male ingenue, I think that's what I'm going for. Uh, I, would you like to get away from the hunk uh, on the soaps? The hunk? Uh, well, I don't know. Like I'm do just getting, I'm, this is the first time I've been the hunk, so it's kind of nice. Uh, yeah. What would you like I, to do next? I'd like to do some stage work. Really? Uh, yes. Definitely. I mean, that's no where I came films? from. No feature films? If it comes, it comes. Broadway? Uh, but the love has always been theater. That's why I got into acting was for theater. And, I mean, this is a great job. What can I say? I mean, it pays a lot of bills so that I can do theater when I want to. Would you do feature films as well? Well, I'm not going to turn it down. Yeah. Assuming it's something worthwhile and decent. I mean, it's, there's no reason for me to go from having a leading role in a, a television show where I, I get good material to go play some horrid role in some two-bit movie somewhere. There's, there's no point in it. What effect has the Writers Guild strike had on uh, daytime television? We haven't had much this way, Max. Hi. Flash works out here. That's nice. That's great. It must be one of those new cameras. Would you like to come in and give him a kiss? Huh? This, 
You know, we're never going to finish Drew's wife this is show. here today, folks. We're never going to end this show unless what, she gets her chance. Come on. What was, come what was, what was, what was come on. But just one little, one. Oh, my God. You see this is a dream have. come true. <laughs> Do you know what show he's on? Friend. Yes, One Dinner. Life to Live. All right. I I'm think you should go with Gabriel. You think I should go yeah, with her? Absolutely. Well, I got absolutely. to. She's pregnant again. Uh, I'm afraid to get near so the woman. Yeah. I'm afraid to get okay, near the woman. Okay, that's enough. Now you have to leave. Wait, can you? She's looking for an after card. She's. Uh, I think she's past Taff Hartley now. Can you believe this? <laughs> this is totally unrehearsed, ladies and gentlemen. Can we do that again? Th is that the kind of reaction like, you oh, get when you go out? You go shopping. You do this. Do you go through this whole? Time? Yeah. Yeah. Basically. I've, I've gone through airport terminals and the guards jump me, not looking for weapons, but because they watch the show.